Shine.fm presents Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Here's Seth Tower Heard. Stronger Together, this is Shine.fm. We're talking comedy, but something beyond comedy with Tracy DeGraff. She's a comedian from the Shine.fm listening area. Arguably, maybe the most expensive comic and that your kids destroyed so many things for you to have jokes about that, like, I'm not sure you're ever going to make it the money back to, like, even out. Oh, well, <laughs> that's true of every parent. <laughs> you know, I, I know you're not a dad yet, but of every parent, that is very true, that, you know, you never make it up. They're, they're not um, an investment. <laughs> they're more of a liability. So I think your story is fascinating. Before we get into the gratefulness stuff, which mm-hmm. is where this episode's going to go, we're talking gratefulness. Mm-hmm. We're talking keeping perspective. But you had five kids mm-hmm. um, pretty quick, and then those kids got older and were running around and like puncturing the pool and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And you always had this idea or this dream that you wanted to do comedy, and it it, it got pushed off for years and years and years, it and did. then you finally got it done. Actually, yes, that is correct. We had our five children in the first 11 years of our marriage. So that's popping out a kid every other year. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, my, my dream in the beginning was to become a writer. I always wanted to be a writer. So I went to school to, to get my journalism degree to become a writer. And when I graduated from school, I was like, oh, I'm going to be a writer. But then I met my husband. I call him Muffin. And we started having our big family, and we had those five mini muffins in the first 11 years. And so my writing dream was pushed to the back burner for over 20 years. I couldn't write. I could barely talk. I was like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's how I was at the end of the day. So did you give up at any point? Did you say, oh, oh yeah. this isn't going to happen? Oh, for sure. I, I, not only did I give up on it, I actually forgot about it. And for a long time, because when when I was busy with five children under the age of 11, all boys, I couldn't think about things down the road. I had to think about what are we going to have for dinner? Who's fighting with who? Who needs a doctor? We've been to the emergency room 21 times. 21. Oh, my gosh. I know. <laughs> We've been questioned, not investigated. <laughs> There's a big difference. <laughs> Big difference. So when when so you're surviving for 9 p.m. for several years. It's like just exactly get them right. to go to bed. They're exactly fed, right. They're not in the emergency room. That is exactly right. I, in fact, I was just saying to my husband the other day, and now the children are all grown to to a point. Our youngest is 16, and our oldest is 27. But the other day, I was just saying, remember when we first had our older boys watching the younger ones? You know, like babysitting. Yeah. We would go out for a date night and come home and say, oh well, at least the house is there. <laughs> you know, there's no sirens in front of it and we we were like as long as this house is still standing and everybody's okay it was a success it it worked exactly so yes my dream was way back way back (laughs) at what point do you get it back then i turned 40 uh, i'm 52 now but when i was about to turn 40 i had a big aha moment um my youngest was going into kindergarten, which was a huge milestone for me at that point because I had had uh, preschoolers for 17 years. That's a long time to be in the preschool season. Oh, my you know? gosh. Right, because from the time from the beginning to the last one, it was 17 years of having either a baby or a preschooler until the last one was in school. It's a long time. I'm trying to think about how much the world changes in 17 years. So that's like going from, like, you have to plug your computer into the wall for the Internet to, like, like the iPhone Seven. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a long time, Tower. It's a long time. <laughs> so um, in, that, in that time period when I was just about to turn 40, I saw a picture of my mother at my wedding, okay? And she was in her 40s at that time, and she sadly passed away just a few years after my wedding. Uh-huh. And I had that, that moment, that moment of this is it. This is your life. If you're going to do it, do it. It was the weirdest thing. It was a Saturday morning. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I was doing laundry, go figure, for seven people, piling things up. And I looked in the mirror. And then I looked at this picture of my mother. And I was like, I am writing a book. That's it. And I decided that day, I'm writing my book. Okay. We're with Tracy DeGraff. We're talking gratefulness. Tracy's a comedian. She's hilarious. I hope you get to see her live sometime. Uh, And also has some really interesting things to say about how do you go for it and how do you maintain gratefulness 
in the middle of the insanity. Yes, this is so true. <laughs> also, <laughs> mother of five, and uh, and so you decided to do this. Yes, right. I did. Uh, <clears throat> how quick did it turn into something real? Um, because here's where almost everybody stops. I'd like to be an author. I'd like to be a stand-up comic. I'd like to write a novel, um, but it doesn't ever become like a real thing. Uh, I made the decision that day, and my husband bought me a laptop for my birthday which was going to be in a couple weeks. And then I just started writing. I thought I was going to write a novel, like um, like a fiction novel, because J.K. Rowling was popular right at the time. And I thought, I have dreams. J.K. Rowling did this like with some sort of a dream that she I had. I could be a billionaire, I too. do it. But then, I promise, Jesus, once I get a billion dollars, I'll use I'm gonna it for give really it away. good things. I'm yeah. going to give it away. But then what happened was, as I was writing this fictitious story, I just like in my real life, I couldn't keep track of all the characters. And I would be writing and I'd be like, well, who are you and where did you come from and where have you been this whole time? You know what I mean? Uh, so I realized quickly that I was not a writer of fiction. And then I, I took a trip with my family a thousand miles from Chicago to North Carolina. And on that trip, I realized that I could really write uh, nonfiction because it was funny because my true life stories were more interesting and funnier than anything that I could imagine in my head. And so part one of this is not giving up. Did you know it was any good? Like when you, when, when you started writing this down, I mean, cause a lot of people think they're funny and they're not. Okay. <laughs> so, so how did you find out it was any good? Okay. So with, with comedy, you always know if you're good, if people laugh. So with stand up, you know, cause I started doing the writing, but stand up wasn't even in the picture yet. I had no ambitions of being a stand up comic at all. I never went to comedy shows. I didn't know any comedians. I had no ambition there at all. But I was writing the stories and sending them out by email to some of my friends. I actually started a blog, a very little blog, and I would send out to my friends, hey, you've got to read this. You've got to see what happened. And it was just my boys doing really dumb things is really what it was. Um, and then it was my friends who said, this is so funny. This is your book. You should put this into a book. Kind of like um, Irma Bombeck is a little before your generation, but Irma Bombeck was yeah. a prolific writer of her time, and it was all true, funny stories that every mom could relate to. And so you're clicking along, you're actually somebody who's getting in and getting to do clean comedy in like clubs on kind of clean comedy nights and, mm -hmm. and that type of thing. And this whole thing gets derailed. Um, you actually are diagnosed with cancer and put hit pause for quite some time. For, yes, this was actually not that long ago. Cause so now I'm coming back from having taken a pause, which is, that is our life, whether it's an illness or some kind of a situation with a job or with your children. There are so many pauses that you have to take in life, especially as a mother, you know? Um, and so it was two years ago that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And that really, it really stops you and makes you think about life, especially having lost my mother to cancer. She was only 51 when she passed away. Wh so for me, so you're younger than you are now. Right. So at 50, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I honestly didn't think that I was going to have to face that. I really didn't think that. There's a lot more comedy mixed with mortality here than I, I thought we were, we were going to get into. Yeah. Um, but one thing that just blew me away when I met you that you've been you've had going for what like 15 plus years now <clears throat> when we talk about gratefulness and like you know enjoy and how do you maintain your faith and and keep your eyes focused on what matters in the chaos mm -hmm. you and one of your friends have actually texted each other every day for how many years uh, the 10 things you're grateful for this or, is true this is true it's actually been since 2011 so this April will be seven years that my best friend and I have sent each other a grateful text and it all started on a walk we were just walking around the neighborhood like two moms out on a nice summer night or it was spring April and we were both in bad places we were like depressed and feeling bad about certain circumstances that everybody goes through, whether they admit it or not. And at the end of that walk, we just said, how about if tonight we just text each other 10 things that we can be grateful for? And, you know, because really in the Bible, we're called as Christians. First, I think it's first Thessalonians five, 16 through 18. I think that's the reference is to pray continually and be grateful always in all circumstances. So we started that in 2011. We didn't imagine that we would be still doing it today, 
but we do it every single day. The top 10 things that we're thankful for, it has changed my life. It really has. It's a small thing. But if, if anybody is feeling disappointed, depressed, desperate, devastated, and you can still look at that and find a few things to be grateful for, God blesses that. And it changes you here, which yeah. changes you here. And the, head follow, the heart follows the head. It's the truth. It is just the truth. So I've, I've been so grateful for that. Uh, that's been something that um, has, I think, been a big theme in my life is both my grandparents were orphaned during the Great Depression. Mm. Uh, and, I, you know, I think about the fact that my, my grandfather was orphaned at two years old and didn't get to finish eighth grade. And anything I am, like, dealing with is not as bad as having to drop out of school when you're 13 to, you know, do manual labor full time for 75 cents a day. Right. It just isn't. Right. It's perspective, right? Yeah. It gives you perspective. And so this is something, by the way, anybody can start this. You could start this right now as you're listening. Text right now. <laughs> right? Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be 10 things. It could be three things or one thing. But my encouragement would be to anybody, find a friend, just one other person who you can share something that you're grateful for at the end of each day. It will blow you away. How have you seen comedy heal people? Because, I mean, th this really is a calling. This isn't just like, hey, right. I want to be famous. I want a Netflix special. Um, you know, although if you do get a Netflix special, definitely come back on. But. <laughs> Comedy is healing. So comedy was God's idea, right? Co the, the definition of comedy is tragedy plus time. So for me, going through all of that whole season of those 20-some plus years of being in the thick of motherhood and having that writing dream on the back burner, God was just giving me something to say. He was just giving me a story to tell. And now, like every story in my book, you know, I've, I've given you my book. Yeah. Every story in that book made me cry real tears of, I hate these kids, like calling my husband. <laughs> I hate them. Why did you do this to me? Because <laughs> you referenced the time that my boys broke the pool. You, you said, because you've read that. They yeah. punctured the pool. and so all above the above ground pool and they were pole vaulting. Exactly right. Yes. And, and my husband got a call from me that day of, these kids are driving me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny now, see? <laughs> it's funny now because tragedy plus time equals comedy. Now that there are 4,000 gallons of um, water being dispersed into the yard. and Right. And we survived it. And we get perspective, see, then. We get perspective of that's really a minor thing. Yeah. But so putting all this out there, how is your family like? Okay, when I first started writing my book, I changed the names of my children to try to protect their, you know, identity or whatever. And then I got mad at him and I'm like, forget it. Let the guilty pay. If you did it, <laughs> it's in there. Then actually a photograph that's in my book and on my website and all that is a picture of my son being all ticked off on Mother's Day. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to wait for you to change your attitude. Here's the picture. <laughs> what was he mad about on Mother's Day? He was mad. Get this, because we were at Great America, and he wanted to be at his friend's house instead of at Great America. Who? What? <laughs> he, he was like nine years old or something like that. He's grown now, and he's, he's over it. I mean, I, I'm of the age that social media didn't happen until I was in college. Facebook came out my, mm -hmm. my sophomore year of college. So a lot of those things that I get to just walk away from, um, this generation, you're just not going to be so lucky. Like it's right. It stays with you. It's going to be around. Yes. We're with Tracy DeGraff, comedian from the uh, Shine.fm listening era area. If you get a chance to see her live, uh, highly recommend that. We're talking about joy and gratitude and how do you mm -hmm. hold on to the fun and the happiness and, and, and really like that deep heartfelt joy that God is with you, even in the most difficult seasons. So you go through cancer. Yes. You, you come back, right? Yes. <clears throat> Like what, what's inspiring you now? What, what do you kind of have to say to the world uh, as you're back on a stage as a stand-up comic after, you know, uh, comedy is tragedy plus time, right? So right. good amount of tragedy. What, what do you have to say to the world now? Well, okay. So I'm 52. I told you that. I will tell you how old I am. I'll lie about my weight till Jesus comes back, but I will tell you <laughs> how old I am. And there's something about facing your own mortality where it's right here. Cause yeah. can cancer is a beast, you know? And so now I kind of, I'm kind of feeling like, what have I got to lose? What, what have I got to lose? I mean, I, every day that I have is a gift from God because we're not guaranteed anything. 
you know Mm -hmm. like like i think about that in terms of my mother's life she died when she was 51 so every day that i live now is a day longer than she had an opportunity to be on this earth so i think that i'm more confident that it doesn't matter if i get out there and i tell a joke and it bombs oh well so what nobody cares it doesn't matter i know that i have a message and um it you know the name of my book is laugh anyway and the name of my show is life happens laugh anyway find some joy there is joy in the ashes you know there really is so i think i'm more fearless now that i've had cancer Okay. And people can grab onto that kind of attitude without necessarily going through something. This is true. Look, look at this. This is a fearless move. Okay. By the way, (laughs) this is a fearless move. Let me set that up. I know you know what I'm talking about. This is a radio it. show and a video show. So if you're listening on Shine.fm when this airs, you can also check out the video. Uh, just search Shine.fm on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, since we, we haven't seen each other for five years. It's so been a your, while. Yes. Your hair is notably more white, which, you know, will never happen to me because I don't have hair. Uh, <laughs> but, but this is a fearless move. So you just went for it, basically. Right. Because uh, I've been coloring my hair since I was 26. So my hair went white really pretty early on, and I didn't really know how white it was until after I had the cancer treatment, the first thing that I was worried about was losing my hair. And that's, that's a hard that's, thing to go yeah. through. And, um, but I said, well, at least I'll know what color it is when it comes back because I'll be able to see it, you know. And then I, I didn't have to have chemotherapy for my treatment, which I was grateful for. Um, and I just made the conscious decision. I am done coloring my hair. I'm done. It takes a lot of time, a lot of money. It's a lot of chemicals on your head. You know what's right under my head? My brain. <laughs> I don't want all those chemicals on my head, you know? And so I just decided to let it grow out and see what it looks like. And I absolutely love it. It's very bright and silvery and shiny. <laughs> and you can't miss me in a crowd, you know? <laughs> I'm here she comes. <laughs> so I love it. Yeah. Um, as far as how this has affected your kids, uh, do you think it's changed their perspective as some of them have, you know, kind of stepped into adulthood as far as what they'll go after? As you mean me having cancer? Uh, no, I, just being a comedian. And... Oh, you know, I think that we inspire people in ways that we'll never know. Um, so, like, I think about my own journey as a kid and my parents. And as I keep on going in life, yes, I'm inspired by a lot of the things that my parents did. So they've seen me persevere through. Uh, it's very tough being a stand-up comedian. It's a tough thing to do. It's tough to write it. It's tough to figure it out. It's, it's I think not it's easy. it's actually one of the most vulnerable places you can put yourself in an American society. Yes. It's you and a microphone, and if they don't laugh, everybody knows eh, it's not so good. Because you can like be in a band, and people can kind of be paying attention in the background and talking, and it's not as obvious your band isn't good. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of things you can try where it's like, it's very binary. You're either really funny, and the room responds, or, or they're not. Exactly. Um, did you ever consider the fact that because you chose a non-traditional career, they might go do something similar? I mean, would, would that be a point of joy for you? Or would that scare you a little bit if they're like, hey, mom, I'm going to go on the road and be a comic too? Okay, so here's a real life example. My third son, who um, he, he started off going to college. He went to college for one week and he said, it's not for me. I said, it's your life. If it's not for you, it's okay. At least you figured that out before you got to pay for the whole semester. Well, yeah. And, you know, he really wanted to do commercial diving, which I was completely against because it's so unsafe, in my opinion. And I get all claustrophobic even thinking about diving, scuba diving. And now he's a commercial diver. That is what he does. So I told him my fears, you know, for his safety, but it's his life. You can do it if you want it. We're with comedian Tracy DeGraff from uh, the Shine.fm um, listening area. You can check her out live. She's out on the road. Um, by the way, website, if you want to throw that out there. Oh, yeah. My website is my name, Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, and DeGraff, D like David, E-G-R-A-A-F like Frank, dot com. And we're talking joy, uh, and we're, we're talking risk here on Stronger Together, which each week aims to help you take away something to uh, better your life and marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. I also think about comedy, you know, as you're doing shows at churches and that type of thing, Mm -hmm. uh, as we live these more digital lives where we interact with people by looking at a four-inch screen, like this is something that you actually do come out and and 
physically like do with your friends, which I think I'm a fan of like anything that puts people together in real life in 2018. Yes, it's an actual <clears throat> event. It's an actual gathering of real people in one place at one time where we can see each other, touch each other. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. It's awesome. Uh, when you've had uh, particularly, you know, people in the, the parenthood stage come up to you and uh, just hearing your stories a lot of time be like, oh, okay, so I'm, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just like this. Sometimes it's insane. Yes. I always tell women, hey, read my book because you're going to feel better about your life. You're going to, because you're either going to read it and go, oh, well, at least I'm not that bad, or she's just like me. So you're, and we need that. Like, I love the little tagline of your show about being stronger together in community. I love that. We need each other. We are not designed to do this thing on our own. Oddly enough, I thought about comedy as actually a pushback from the overly perfective or like perfectionistic narrative of like the Instagram era. Where it's like, hey, look, our kids are super smart, and our dog is obedient, and our house is pretty. <laughs> There's nothing funny about and that. And also, we're so stressed out, we can't hardly stand it. It's nauseating. <laughs> so, now, if you want to back up about 20 years, do you remember, you may not remember this, but maybe you do because you were in media. Do you remember Christmas letters that people would send out before texts and social media? It was a letter. It was a long litany of all the wonderful things about your life that mothers would send and, and to the, other mothers. Still Others. happen, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Facebook now. That's Instagram now. You know, it's like it's like putting all of your bumper sticker life out there, <laughs> but it's not reality. I, I'm going to tell on Rob from the Shine Dad FM Morning Show real quick. Oh, I love Rob. He, he got a Christmas letter from these people. They're like, and then we bought our daughter a pony. He's like, that's it. I'm never <laughs> hanging out with these people again. <laughs> I did a Christmas letter one time where I put all the negative things that were happening. <laughs> <laughs> one of my boys had shot the other one with an airsoft gun because the first one threw a snowball. I mean, it was like, they weren't horrible things. They were boy things. Yeah. But, and I put it together in a humorous way. I don't mean to say like, oh, I'm looking at all my, my negative negativity, but it was funny and it was real life and it was just kind of okay. And I sent it out to people and they loved it. <laughs> and it gives people permission to be like, okay. Yeah. All right. My kid didn't make the honor roll. I still love him. Yes. You know, okay. Unconditionally. My, my kid's not <laughs> the number one, you know, soccer player in sixth grade. I still love him. So what? Right. Uh. Exactly. This way it is. Lower your expectations so you can meet them. <laughs> That's my motto. <laughs> We're with comedian Tracy DeGraff. <laughs> uh, Overachievers. <laughs> you can catch her live in the Shine Dad FM listening area. Uh, didn't start her comedy and writing career till she was in her 40s uh, yeah. and uh, and then went through uh, about a cancer and, and came back and really has a message of um, just strength and encouragement, um, <clears throat> particularly that, um, you know, you can love your kids where they're at and mm -hmm. you can find joy um, in, in the middle of the chaos. Yes. When you kind of look back over, you know, you're, you're 10 plus years in, in comedy now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, which most people just don't hang around, don't stick around long enough to be successful at anything a lot of times. What was the hardest, um, the hardest thing you went through as far as like, can I still do this? Am I funny? Are people enjoying it? Am I actually bringing, you know, d something that God has given me into these events? I mean, did you question yourself? <laughs> the first two years that I did stand up, I took a class at the Second City, and then I did open mics around the Chicago area for two years. And those two years were the toughest because open mics were like on the weekday, so like Wednesday night, nine o'clock. My audience is moms. Do you know where the moms are not? Comedy clubs on Wednesday night Exactly, at nine exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I would go to these open mics and there would be 55-year-olds um, and 21-year-olds and a lot of men. And I thought if I can make this audience laugh, I know when I get to my audience of moms, they're gonna, they're definitely gonna laugh. And that has been true, but it was really hard to push through those first two years. And as, you know, you're maybe going through like the worst thing that, that anybody can kind of have to endure and keep going in some ways, which is being ignored sometimes. Did you feel a sense that, that God really had something for you to do in this arena? I felt like, um, I definitely feel like God has given me a message of hope and encouragement 
that even if it's not great right now, this is just a season. So if that pertains to being a mother or, be, or pursuing a dream or, you know, being a, a spouse, you can go through difficulty, but it's a season. You got to hold on until you can get through that. And the next thing could be so much better. So, yeah, definitely. Okay. And, and you, even in this interview, we're honest about the fact that like, hey, kids, you got five of them. If you're just joining us with comedian Tracy DeGraff here on Stronger Together. Hey, kids, I really love you. This month, I don't really like you that much. Oh, yeah. My husband, he says, we don't have a favorite. We just have a least favorite. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yeah. We, we just do our best. Okay. The older I get, the longer I live, the more humble I think I become. Because I realize I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other. And so is everybody else. And nobody's better than me or worse than me. So it's a humbling experience. With comedian uh, Tracy DeGraff, you can check out her website. You can catch her live. I've seen her perform. She's really, really funny. As we kind of put a bow on this topic of, of gratefulness and you know, kind of enduring, really sharing with someone what you're grateful for every day, changes the whole game right yeah and then the other thing is uh your kids are probably gonna be fine (laughs) they're what your kids are probably going to be fine like as someone who now has you know a couple kids who've reached adulthood right like absolutely uh, there's probably not if if you're a caring christian parent there's probably not one thing you're going to do that's going to just totally you know wreck their life okay so i was in a prayer meeting right before i came here with other moms i do this once a week i have a prayer meeting um it's a very small group we meet for an hour and a half every friday and we pray for our children the heart of a mother is her child so when when a mother has a child and then the child goes off and moves away i don't care how old they are i don't care how old you are you're you're your mother's child yeah so your heart like you're you're from like Fish Hook or something, Fishhook, aren't Illinois, you? Yes. Okay, so your mother might be in Fish Hook, but her heart is here. So so we pray once a week for our children because whether we did it right or did it wrong doesn't matter. God loves those children so much more than we possibly could. So I feel like prayer is where there's a lot of encouragement for moms just to stay in the prayer space, if you will. And that's not the easiest thing, especially if your kids are really young and they're exhausting you it's not the easiest thing to say okay i'm going to find another 20 minutes half hour whatever no but you're saying that's the most important thing well okay when i was in that season of parenting it was so difficult it was more like help me god that was my prayer right so now that my kids are older i can carve out an hour and a half to pray so i'm, I'm not really putting a time limit on it or whatever i'm just saying Prayer is really what what should hold you through. So if any mom is out there feeling regret, like I didn't do it right, like I was hugging on a mom this morning who who had some tears because she felt like she hasn't done it right. And I said, even if you did it right, that doesn't guarantee that they're going to do this or do that. You know, she wants her kids to be following Christ. Um, it's, It's in his realm. We just have to be faithful in the little things. And then he takes care of the big picture. Comedian Tracy DeGraff, this has been Stronger Together. Okay, we got to go out on... <laughs> yes? <laughs> on what? <laughs> Something insane that your children did. Because if nothing else, it's going to make a lot of parents feel a lot better. Uh, okay. So you, you raised, you know, raised slash and raising five kids. They destroyed a lot of things. They drove you nuts sometimes. They gave you a comedy career. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I hear, There's many, many things, but I, this is a brief one. My husband and I now are getting our house prepared for downsizing because we have, you know, all these extra bedrooms now because three of the kids have moved. So so he's painting everything and repairing everything. Well, when they were in the throes of running up and down the stairs and stuff like that, they destroyed the railing, absolutely destroyed it. And my husband had just shorted up with two by fours. So there was the railing. It was just two by fours that were nailed together. And we thought, we're not going to actually fix this until they move out because they're just going to destroy gonna it again. It again. <laughs> and then they had wrecked something else. So we had the stove was in the dining room for some reason. And this woman comes over to pick up her son who was playing at my house or her grandson. And when the doorbell used to ring back then, I would just be like, come on in, because it was always another kid. So here comes this woman and she looks around 
around my house. It was the first time she had been in there. And like I said, I've lowered my expectations of myself so I can meet my own goals, right? She's looking around my house and she goes, oh, you're remodeling. And I go, yeah, that's it. <laughs> We're remodeling. We're constantly remodeling. We have a demolition crew for the next 18 years. Right. And then we're going to fix it up and sell it. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Comedian Tracy DeGraff, you need to see her live. Uh, if for some reason you can't, uh, you still hopefully can walk away from this episode by saying, I can find a buddy and you know, check in to be grateful every day and I can pray for my kids. Yes. And when they destroy stuff, I can fix it later. Yes, because it's all small stuff, right? <laughs> hey, if you caught this on the radio and you want to hear the full conversation, you can always search Shine.fm podcast wherever you subscribe to audio or check out the video in full on Facebook or YouTube. Just search Shine.fm. That was Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Subscribe to the Shine.fm podcast to catch every episode of Stronger Together, available on the iTunes podcast app and wherever podcasts are available.